The village of Tavoli dates back, in part, to the earliest days of the Fourth Age. The stone circle found within Tavoli has been dated to between the very start of the Fourth Age and the year 200 of the Fourth Age, nearly 2,000 years ago. While this sacred site was built by the Druids of Guthix, it is unknown whether or not the actual settlement of Tavoli itself was built at this time. Another similar stone circle, built by the Druids of this time, can be found near Varrock, possibly implying that the Druids were nomadic, at least for a time, or split into two different communities. Supporters of Guthix, the god of balance and nature. The Druids have a strong connection to nature and strive to keep the balance of Guthix upon the natural world. Though Tavoli was eventually absolved into the kingdom of Asgarnia at some point after its founding in the years 800 to 1000 of the Fourth Age, they have largely remained neutral in politics. The Druids of Tavoli developed skill with herbs and potions over the years. This skill allowed them to apply their knowledge of the natural into a practice art. At some point in their history, a group of Druids split off. This split faction began to believe in both Guthix and Zamorak, changing their religious practice to suit both gods. This faction, now known as the Chaos Druids, fled into the dungeon below Tavoli where they still practice their mixed faith and grow their knowledge of herb lore. In the village of Tavoli, there are a few tasks for Citizenscape today. To start with, we have our skill tasks. We'll be looking to plant a willow tree in the tree patch, as well as move our house from Remington to Tavoli. To impress the locals, we will be decorating the garden in our house with trees. Once we unlock herb lore, we'll be increasing our level to level 5. There's only one combat task that we'll be doing today. We'll need to enter the dungeon below Tavoli and kill a Chaos Druid. For our quest tasks, we'll be looking to complete two quests. Firstly, the Druidic Ritual quest, and secondly, the Witch's House quest. Finally, we have our miscellaneous tasks. I'll be looking to make a purchase for Gaius's two-handed shop and Jatex's herbal shop. We'll also be looking to get a Druid robe top and Druid robe bottom fit in with the locals. Finally, we'll be looking to recharge our prayer points at the Altar of Guthix. With all that in store for today, let's begin. We start our journey today walking through the iconic gates to Tavoli. Before we can get to the town itself, we see a sad boy crying by the side of the road. Uh, hey kid, what's up? Is everything okay? I kicked my ball over the fence into the witch's garden. She will give it back. Now, now, I'm sure she's not a witch. Did you ask her nicely to return it? I did. Then she locked it away in her shed. Well, how about I go ask her? How does that sound? I'm sure she'll give it back. We make our way to the door of the lady's house. We're not sure she's actually a witch, but the last time a kid told us someone was a witch they were right, so who knows? Well, no answer. I'm sorry, kid. No answer at the door. She's there in her garden. Hello? Miss? Can I talk to you? I think she's ignoring me. It's not really fair of her to keep the ball. She's mean like that. She keeps a key under the pot near her front door if you want to get inside to get her attention. Well, I don't really see another way. So we enter the house. We can't make our way through the garden where the witch is, as the door won't open. The door has no handle either, so the locking mechanism must be somewhere else. While we wouldn't usually invade someone's privacy, the diary here on the table might help me to understand the door. The book turns out to be the witch's diary. She talks about an experiment that is becoming wild and powerful. It seems that she's moved it into the garden shed where the bowl's being kept. The diary goes on to say that the garden door is locked by a convoluted system using a mouse and a magnet. She goes on to say that the key to the shed is locked in a compartment in the fountain outside. The witch is a follower of Zamorak. She won't appreciate me snooping around. I'd better not get caught, though I still need to get the ball back. The witch mentioned a security system in her basement downstairs. We've seen a piano like this before when Abigail killed everyone on that island. There was a secret compartment in that piano, but there doesn't seem to be in this one. We check out the fence and get an electric shock. Since the experiment is dangerous and locked in the garden shed with the ball, we gear up and bring food. 
With gloves on, we should be able to touch the gate here without a shock. Once past the gate, we search around and find a magnet in the cupboard. We brought a piece of cheese to entice the mouse. Once we lure it out, we stick the magnet to its harness and it unlocks the door. We don't know what the witch will do to us if she catches us, so we sneak by the bushes as she paces in the garden. We make it around to the fountain and grab the shed key from the compartment mentioned in the diary. We sneak back to the garden shed and make our way inside. An odd looking creature in the shed doesn't seem interested in us. We go to grab the ball and it attacks. We think that we've defeated it, but it changes into a spider stronger than the last time. With the spider defeated, it changes again into a bear. The bear is tough, but we take it down slowly, getting a strength level in the process. The experiment changes for the final time, this time into a wolf. We have to eat a lot of our food to keep up, but we manage to take it down. With the experiment defeated, we can grab the ball. Without a dangerous experiment, I feel better about the safety of Tavali's people. Now that we have the ball, we can sneak back past the witch and out of the house. Did you get the ball back? I did. You better be careful where you kick it. From what I saw, I doubt you'll get it back again. Thanks, mister. With that boy helped, it's time for us to enter the rest of Tavoli. We talk with the druids in town. We ask where we can learn the art of herb lore. They direct us to the head herbalist, a druid named Cake Mix, at the Stone Circle. What brings you to our holy monument? Are you Cake Mix? I was told to seek you out with questions about herb lore. Yes, I am Cake Mix. I am a member of the druids of Guthix. This Stone Circle is one of our holy monuments that can be found around G. Eleanor. Oh, I've heard of Guthix, the god of balance and nature, right? You don't look like his other followers though, the... Void Knights? Indeed. They are warriors in service to Guthix's balance. We are the druids in service to his nature. Ah, oh, I see. So your attunement with nature helps you with the art of herb lore, yes? That's part of our practice, but our stone circles keep us attuned to Guthix himself. They sound quite important. They are. The problem is, one of the few surviving circles is found near a rock. Its magic is being drained by dark wizards who have taken control of the area. While they continue to curse and corrupt the stones for their rituals, our powers drain. So you need someone to take out the wizards? The wizards have placed the corruption, but we need the corruption lifted more than the wizards eliminated. An associate of mine in town named Sanfu is working on a potion for restore the stones. Please, would you help him? Of course I'll help, I'll head there right away. Once this is resolved I can teach you the ways of herb lore. We ask around and the people tell us where to find Sanfu. He can be found upstairs in one of the buildings in town. He explains that he can make a potion but it will require the raw meats of a bear, cow, rat and chicken. Furthermore, the meat must be dipped in the cauldron of thunder which can only be found in the dungeons below Tavoli. With our task in hand we head out in search of a bear. We've seen cows, chicken and large rats before, but we've also seen a bear on our way into Tavoli. We quickly make our way to the bear and kill it. Next, we travel southward to Port Sarim, where we've seen giant rats. Killing a giant rat gets us two of the meats we need. We make our way back to Lumbridge and then to the cow pen. We've been given permission in the past to kill these cows, so that's three meats acquired. What are you doing on my land? Stranger? Fred, it's me, Citizenscape. You must not have recognized me with my helmet on. What can I do for you, lad? Well, I was sort of hoping you'd let me have a chicken. The thing is, you see, there are these druids. And... No problem, you've helped me in the past. By all means, have a chicken. Thanks, Fred. That's the final meat. Now, to make our way into the dungeon. As we walk the halls of the dungeon looking for this cauldron, we're attacked by a skeleton. We take it down as we see a cauldron through a gate with sets of armor on either side. We go to open the gate and the sets of armor come alive to attack us. We take the first one out, getting level 24 strength in the process. The second one isn't too difficult either. The sets of armor have a Sarah Domin symbol on them. Wonder why they're here and why they're guarding the cauldron. Once we make our way to the cauldron, we dip each of the meats in, one at a time, turning them blue. Let's head back to Sanfu. We give him each of the meats and he thanks us for our help. Once we return to Cake Mix, he begins to tell us about herb lore, explaining different herbs, secondary ingredients, and the use of vials. Mm -hmm. 
Now that we're familiar with herb law, we can properly clean our grammy guam. Cake Mix told us that we could mix them with eyes of newt in a vial of water to make potions that increase our attacking capabilities. While making these potions, we gain some levels in herb law. With level 5, we can clean our Marantil. We should ask Cake Mix what to do with Marantil potions. Hi Cake Mix, I was wondering, what could you add to a vial of water and Marantil? Why, the ground up horn of a unicorn of course. It makes a potent anti-poison. Oh, uh, but isn't it a shame to kill a creature as noble as the unicorn? When you need anti-poison, it's worth it. I hear that you'll be looking to return to Karam soon. Anti-poison would be handy then. Well, I guess you're right. I can't keep mixing attack potions anyway at this point. My herb supply is running a little low. Many of our herbs were stolen some time ago by the Chaos Druids. A group of defectors that turned to the support of Zamorak and fled into the dungeon below Taverly. I'm sure you can get a fresh stock if you defeated them. Well, I guess. We head into the dungeon to assess the situation. They may be Zamorakian now, but killing them seems a little extreme. When we get there though, we find their altar with blood and skeletons all around. It looks like they're making sacrifices. If we're to protect the people of Tavoli, we'll have to stop them. We start to take out some of the Chaos Druids, getting us another strength level. They drop herbs on occasion, though not always ones we can use right now. They try to use spells to restrain and weaken us, but their punches aren't dealing too much damage. Though we've collected a decent assortment of herbs from the Chaos Druids, we don't have too many of the ones we can use right now. We make our way out of the dungeon and back to the bank to clean them. When we use the new Guam leaves, we get another level, putting us at level 6 herb law. While we don't feel good about killing a unicorn, the anti-poison sounds really useful for our future plans. We've only ever seen unicorns on Entrana and near Lumbridge. Since we can't bring weapons to Entrana, we'll have to find the one near Lumbridge. We look around for a bit before finding it. We manage to take it down and grind its horn up for our potion. That's an anti-poison achieved. We're looking to fit in with the people and we have a few more tasks to do. Hi, I was wondering where I can get robes like yours. You should be able to find a pair in the basket there. There we are. Now that we look the part, let's do some more of our tasks. We can rake this farming patch and plant a willow tree here. Now that we're growing an apple tree in Brimhaven, we can use our own apples to pay the gardener. We'll have to wait four hours for this to grow. In the meantime, let's move our house to Tavoli. Hello again. Uh, I was wondering how much would it cost to move my house from Rubington to Tavoli? That'd be 5,000 gold. 5,000 gold? Oh, wait, we did this bit already. Um, sure, hold on. We return and pay the estate agent, successfully moving our house. Now that our house is in Tavoli, let's impress the locals by filling out our garden. We take a quick look to find out what plants we can plant in our garden. We can get them from a shop in Falador Park near Wyson. We make the purchases and find ourselves getting low on money. Despite this, we plant our new trees and plants, getting us a construction level in the process. We did replace the pumpkin, as the people of Tavoli don't seem to have the Halloween spirit that Brimington had. Well, it could look nicer. It'll do for now. Since we have our money on us, let's make our purchases. We buy a two-handed sword from Gaius. It seems a little strange for a shop like this to be set up in a druidic town, but anyway. Since we used the watering can for the plants in our house, we fill that up at the fountain while we're here. Our only other purchase today is from Jatix's Herbal store. We can always use more vials, so we buy a pack of 100. We remember Brian and Remington telling us about the flax in Tavoli. We managed to pick a bunch of it. Since we still have time to kill before our willow tree is ready, let's go to Lumbridge and spin them into bowstrings. We didn't manage to get a level, but now we have bowstrings for future. So you were saying there was a legend about this chest? That's right. It won't open for anyone. It's called the Crystal Chest. Legend says that the only key to it was split in two. If someone could assemble the two parts of the key and open the chest, there are supposed to be riches inside. Hmm, fascinating. Maybe I'll just give it a go without the key? N nope. Won't budge. Ha, good try. Good day to you, sir. Good day, I'm Citizenscape. Who are you? I'm the Lady of the Lake. Well, what does that mean? Oh, uh, how mysterious. 
We can complete another miscellaneous task that we've set ourselves by recharging prayer points at the stone circle. With that complete, let's check out the progress on our tree. Looks like it's ready. That's our final task for today. With that, we've helped the people of Tavoli and learned a bit about herb lore. We make our way back to Musa Point via boat, then through Brimhaven, crossing into southern Karamja. Please join me next time in Taibo One Eye.